Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey. Well, I hope you're having a great new year. I'm just things are moving quite quickly. It's hard to believe that we're already uh, heading into our third week of the new year and things are uh, already beginning to build uh, momentum for programs and projects for the year. I hope so much that the videos and the efforts that uh, we made on this channel to give you the best information possible on your end was helpful. Starting from October, we did more than 12 videos directed specifically at your end to help you with everything from your overall planning process to effective letters to effective phone calls to calling back afterwards and thanking people to appreciating your staff and I would love to find out if that was helpful for you and if it was beneficial I wanted to really see some great things happen we've got a video coming out soon sharing some of the successes that others have had as a result of the recommendations but I hope you specifically had some great results as far as year end and also just the exciting things that happened as a result of hearing from some of the information the resources that we provided on this channel uh, love to get your feedback down below please put in the comment section how your year-end went our organization which is in its 70th year this year had its best December ever in history and uh, as far as my personal funding I mentioned numerous times that I raised my own personal support and I uh, had a very exciting year end and I'll share some of those things as well too well let's dive right into our our set of questions today we've actually got two very similar questions today and I'm gonna go ahead and pose those to you today our first question today is from Mary in Chicago and Mary asks with the uptick in COVID cases what are your recommendations about how to proceed with spring and fall events well Mary thank you so much for that question I know this is uh, a difficult time for many of you trying to decide what you want to do and of course all parts of the United States especially are very different from each other some of the major cities like New York City Chicago Los Angeles are still experiencing uh, high cases of COVID and are also um, having many many restrictions uh, either restrictions that went back up again or some that were really never lifted and then there's other cities in the United States that uh, have very little restrictions uh, and even some states uh, with little to no restrictions and so I know it's difficult to determine exactly uh, your path of, of, uh, of action and your steps but I'll go ahead and, and make an attempt at the at answering this question as best possible just knowing all the the di different circumstances with that I know that many of you had been optimistic and were thinking very positive as you were heading into October and November uh, for a spring and especially fall 2022 events and as a result you booked in I one of the things that I have found is that uh, this spring really was just jam-packed uh, for hotels everything was r really backloaded into spring of 22 uh, everything from spring and fall 2020 and spring and fall 2021 was moved into spring of 2022 so trying to find space in hotels even in the midst of all this or other venues has been very difficult that seems to be one of the things that we're finding is that many uh, venues uh, are, are booked up especially one of my recommendations is always a Friday or Saturday night for events and of course Friday and Saturday nights were are the most popular for many many venues and uh, those were booked up really quickly on that one of the things that I believe and if you have if you are one of those organizations that does have an event booked especially this spring um, my recommendation really has been even in the middle of an increase in these COVID cases I'm I'm an eternal optimist if if you know me at all personally you'll know that uh, I'm always trying to look for the the bright side of of any situation so I am still hoping that this uh, Omicron uh, variant that we have right now um, I'm hearing that many of the experts are saying that by the end of January middle February will have peaked and we'll start to see a downhill slide and so if you have a March April May dinner this spring 
Uh, my recommendation to any uh, for any of our teams that we have with our organization and anyone who's called me and asked me for advice has been to proceed with caution that you should move forward optimistically contacting individuals to be table hosts, to come to your dinner, to be part of your event, knowing that we may have to pivot and shift at the last minute. Of course, 2020 and 2021, we learned uh, very well how to shift at the last minute and pivot uh, and, and look for alternatives in any of the things that we were doing. And I believe that's still going to be important for you to be willing to change at a moment's notice if you have to. That might mean that you would shift from having your event in person to having it virtually. Uh, it could be a combination where you record your event and uh, still have it at a smaller scale, uh, less people, but still a live event and then rebroadcast that or broadcast that later uh, to another audience and, and challenge those individuals to give via online. Or you may have to reschedule your event for the fall or spring of 2023. And if you're one of those organizations that has had to shift for the last two years, the idea of shifting a third time, I'm sure, doesn't doesn't uh, excite you at all, but I believe that's that's what you probably would have to do if you're at that point. Um, some have already made decisions to be virtual events, and I'm uh, I've already had some conversations with individuals. Uh, this will be some organizations' third virtual event, and I know. That's not easy because we are seeing the numbers drop, but if you are in one of those cities where that's your only alternative, then that's what you have to do. But my recommendation to most is to continue to proceed uh, forward with your event, telling people that we would like for them to optimistically or by faith step out and at least accept to be a table host and we know in reality that most people don't start working on filling their tables for two, uh, two to four weeks before your event. So if you've got an April event, that still buys you quite a lot of time and, and a lot could happen between uh, the middle of January and the uh, middle of April. So uh, I would ask those people to hang in there with you, step out in faith, and um, at least accept the uh, opportunity to be a table host and that will just adjust uh, should the, the need arise to adjust. So that would be my recommendation for you. Now I mentioned also that we had a similar question and uh, I'd like to go ahead and address that question as well today. And the similar question is, I'm seeing a steep increase in food prices at many of the venues I'm looking at. What would you recommend well, thank you so much for that question. And uh, the answer is yes. I'm seeing a steep increase in the food prices, menu prices. And it could be as a result of a number of factors. Um, it certainly could be an increase in the cost of beef or chicken or uh, poultry fish. It could be any of those factors. Uh, just knowing that uh, supply chains uh, are, uh, you know, things have been affected by COVID. Uh, it could also have to do somewhat with the need to have to staff up and just the shortage of workers. Uh, I, I, I saw it even in the fall of this last year was that a number of venues had to work with shortened staff, which meant the service wasn't as prompt or as good as it normally was. But I had to sympathize with them because I know they tried their hardest to get staff. And that may also be part of that is that they have to just simply pay more staff so the costs get directed and passed down to us, the consumer. But also too, um, I'm also sort of wondering if some of these properties aren't trying to make up for two years of lost revenue, that uh, their, their venues were greatly impacted with uh, the loss of revenue. Some to the tune of, of millions, if not tens of millions uh, of dollars were lost in revenue as a result of not being open and not being able to have events. So I, yes, I am definitely seeing the higher prices. Uh, my answer to that is to continue to work on negotiating as much as you possibly can. 
Uh, I've developed a good reputation with a lot of venues and properties. So going in there, even though the chef or the decision makers may be asking for higher prices, they're at least willing to meet me halfway. Uh, they are willing to negotiate uh, and I would recommend this. I would negotiate in two areas. Number one, I would negotiate in quality and cut and I would also negotiate in serving size. So in other words, if I'm used to a ribeye or a London broil for my dinner, I might look at a lower quality cut such as a flat iron steak. Uh, it's not that big of a quality drop, but it will be a price drop. And I also would look at maybe reducing ounces from what you normally have. If you're normally using, used to using a six or an eight to 10 ounce cut of beef, look at the possibility of doing a six or even a four ounce cut to help to reduce costs. But I can tell you this, if you agree on a price that's higher, don't think that as food costs start to get reduced that any venue is going to reduce the cost of their meals. Uh, is after As someone who has been negotiating meal contracts and events for 37 years, I have yet to find a venue that has ever dropped prices on me. Once they get locked in and they get you paying the price, very rarely will they take those prices down. So I hope that helps in answering these questions. Thank you so much for joining us again this week for this episode of Jim and Java. Uh, if uh, you are not currently a subscriber, uh, we would love to have you part of this growing community of individuals who are learning sound development, fundraising principles, and just communi uh, community growing and building together, looking out for each other and helping each other. So uh, as always, we want to help you to increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks so much. See you at the next video.